Hello, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Whether a country is at war or peace, they always keep their planes in check for the next big thing. An all-weather multi-role tactical fighter jet, the F-15 Eagle, was created to take on all forms of adversaries. The United States Air Force claims it has unprecedented maneuverability and acceleration, range, weapons, and avionics that let the Air Force take and keep air superiority on the battlefield. But when it lands, the real work may have just begun. Maintenance airmen, such as those within the 48th Fighter Wing, conduct varying forms of maintenance on the Eagles. Based in Europe, the 48th Fighter Wing is part of the USAF's 3rd Air Force, also known as the Statue of Liberty Wing. The 48th Fighter Wing's maintenance group takes responsibility for all intermediate-level maintenance of the F-15 aircraft, such as engine maintenance. When it comes to repairing the engine, it must first be carefully extracted from the plane. The F-15E Strike Eagle is powered by two Pratt & Whitney F-100 PW220 or 229 turbofan engines with afterburners. So uh, our typical missions are, you know, three to four hour uh, sorties, and, uh, but we can stay airborne much, much longer than that due to all the tanker support. The twin-engine fighter jet was produced by the McDonnell Douglas Corporation and is still used today. Maintenance personnel working on the jet engine typically remove it from the jet when it's time to get work done, both for safety and for the ease of the worker. While the maintenance team tests the engine, they will often start off by looking for leaks. When turning them on, fire is shot out the end, as if the plane were actually taking off. The noise has been described as extremely loud, so the engineers typically wear hearing protection gear over their ears. Though each engine is the same, they may have different problems. So it is the role of the fourth component maintenance squadron to troubleshoot and figure out the problem before sending it back to put on the plane. Due to the extreme conditions produced by the plane engine while it is on and being tested, maintenance often takes place in what is called a hush house. These sites are specifically made locations created for testing aircraft systems. They are enclosed, noise-suppressed facilities where engineers can test engines and other aircraft systems under actual load conditions as well as room for working on aircraft parts. Some hush houses have areas for a variety of testing. This may include anything from weight and balance, weather-related testing, or night vision and low lighting. Hush houses are typically large enough to accommodate an entire aircraft despite parts such as the F-15 engine being tested separately from the actual aircraft. Once the jet is officially flight ready, the F-15 might take off at what is called a full afterburner. The afterburner is a component that is only added to some jet engines, typically those created specifically for going fast. An afterburner increases a jet's thrust for takeoff, as well as supersonic flight. 
It does this by injecting extra fuel into the exhaust stream of a turbojet engine's turbine. This results in a massive amount of extra thrust. While most maintenance is routine and the jets are back in the air fairly quickly, some maintenance takes more time than others. In fact, there are three levels of aircraft maintenance, according to NASA. Level one is the operational level, or O level. This is when the maintenance may be performed by flight line personnel and is usually a type of scheduled inspection. The second level up is called the intermediate level, or I level, which is maintenance work that is more extensive than the O level. This is likely to be parts repair or major inspections. The third and final level is depot level maintenance. Which requires extensive modification or overhaul. Depot level maintenance is typically used to support the other two levels of maintenance activities. This may include the rebuilding or upgrading of parts, assemblies, or sub-assemblies. In addition, the process involves the testing of the rebuilt or upgraded parts as needed. Once planes have been tested and approved, they are ready for takeoff. Aircraft like the F-A-18 Hornet, created by McConnell Douglas, is powered by twin F-414 GE-400 turbofan engines from General Electric. The all-weather aircraft is capable of multi-role combat. Considered as both a fighter and an attack aircraft. Designed for versatility, the aircraft has excellent aerodynamics as part of its main features. It can perform various forms of defense and enemy suppression. Fighter escorts, reconnaissance, and support. Similarly, its counterpart, the EA-18G Growler, is considered one of the most airborne electronic warfare aircraft. Created from an F-A-18 Hornet, this plane can operate from both carrier and land bases. And has a thrust of up to 44,000 pounds. Thanks to the plane's ability to take off from an aircraft carrier, many of the F-A-18s are maintained out at sea. Things such as routine maintenance will be carried out on the lower deck of an aircraft carrier. To get to the hangar bay, an airplane will use an elevator built into the ship, allowing aircraft and important machinery to be transported from the hangar deck to the flight deck of the ship. Sailors, such as the ones assigned to the top hatters of Strike Fighter Squadron 14, or the Black Aces of the FA-41, may perform routine maintenance. 
This could be anything from the plane's landing gear to its ejection seats. However, when it comes to engine maintenance, the Marine Aviation Logistics Squadron in places like Marine Corps Station in Miramar, California, Marines, sailors, and civilians work to build and repair FA-18 engines. The squadron will take the engine apart, build, repair, or troubleshoot as needed before sending it back to a plane. We remake the engine um, at around 600 hours. The engine needs an inspection, just like your car's 3,000 mile oil change. The squadron will take the engines off the birds and they bring them down here and uh, my guys will break them down. They break down into individual modules um, and so they will repair rebuild, and sometimes even troubleshoot. Once the plane is ready to head out again, the plane will prepare for takeoff. In some circumstances, the plane may perform a catapult-assisted takeoff but arrested recovery. This occurs when an aircraft is launched during takeoff using a catapult for assistance while on an aircraft carrier. Most of the catabar exists beneath the aircraft carrier's deck. However, the exposed, moving part of the catapult is above the carrier's deck. The testing of the catapult system is, therefore, very crucial for safe takeoff and landing at this mobile maritime airport. The tests are carried out by catapulting unpowered vehicles and other specialized objects. It is done both on the older steam-powered catapult systems as well as the newer electromagnetic systems. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.